so this is going to be part two of the uh, PCIe bus bar build. So I'm done putting these out. Right now I'm putting out the base of it. Alright, so I got the parts. I got some uh, eight, gar eight, ga or 8 gauge wire here. 15 feet and that's going to be the bus that goes across. And then I have these uh, PCIe connectors. Um, I couldn't actually find the uh, straight ones. I could only find these on Amazon. So I'm going to bend the pins up and I'm going to get them in there. I'll show you that. Then I got this. This was a pretty incredible deal. Seven bucks. So it's a six pin to eight pin. Um, so really, I mean, my original idea was just to, to fire up the uh, PCI uh, risers just in the back and have separate wires for the, uh, the GPUs. But if you wanted to, I'll show you this, but this is more than sufficient. This can pull 30 amps. So this could actually definitely power all your GPUs. But you'd actually, the feed wire would have to be thicker, and I'll show you that when I get to that point. But So i got to super glue this together, and then I'll run the bus wire down here, and I'll show you that. And these will feed through here, like that. i bend the pins up, feed them down. Mm. And so here's a wire, cut off a piece here. So I'm going to find a way to make this as straight as possible, maybe with a little hammer, and uh, on my vice, just to make it a little bit, see how it's kind of not 100% straight. Even this would probably do a lot of aligning, uh, you know. So you just want to actually hammer out just most of the major kinks. I usually use a, a car body hammer, but any hammer should work on a flat surface. Just kind of hit it a little bit. That way you can push it down in there. See? I'll use my little, like a little punch to get in there. Okay, so now that I have both the bus bars down, the conductors, I'm going to actually bend these out straight. I'm going to push them through here. The little pins are going to go through here. Yeah. Okay, so I found that if you cut the pin like right there, it's actually in perfect alignment if you pull the other one out. So as you can see, so that's actually where the, those are going to be the solder points right there. All right, got them all in there, and make sure the orientation is correct with the tab. Make sure they're all in the same direction. This is it's polarity specific if you're not familiar with electronics. Um, all right, I'm heating up my solder iron here. So now I'm actually going to solder from the copper wire. To the actual individual pins. So six and or actually three on one side, three on the other is positive and negative, positive and negative. So my first facade I didn't get very good adhesion so I came back I roughed up the wire with my little screwdriver to get some cleanness and then I'm also going to preheat the wire. Um, it's a pretty cold day today so I'm going to kind of run my little heat gun over this just for a little bit just to warm up the copper a little bit so it's going to be easier to make it uh, the solder stick. So those are my first solder joints when it was kind of colder. I was trying to get to stick. And as you can see, it started getting actually better as the rod got hotter. It flowed a lot better. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this. Um, also, that flowed really good here. So this thing actually is going to want to warp a little bit. So just make sure you kind of bend it back into place. Alright, so now i got to actually wire the power, the main power that's going to go into here. So this could be accomplished by with some heavy gauge wire that goes in there. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to uh, use actually a 8-pin uh, Mullinx connector. I'm going to cut it off. This is like an ex extra cable that I had. Uh, the issue is you just got to make sure before you do this, you got to make sure the pinouts are correct on your power supply. Like I have a Corex uh, HX1200 watt power supply, but they're the opposite of this. So if you were to plug this into your device, it would fry everything. Because the polarity would be reversed. Um, so just keep. I even took my multimeter and double checked. But uh, yeah, I gotta take this apart and flip it around. So I'll do that right now. But like I said, I could actually solder this. I don't know other videos of me soldering stuff directly on board power supplies. Um, but I, I would actually get heavier gauge wire. Let's say like probably six gauge wire, and I could solder this straight onto the actual power supply motherboard. And if I did that, then I could actually I could fire up all the GPUs themselves. 
um, they would actually would run on themselves. So, um, yeah, because this is definitely more than enough juice, that, that solid copper bar, to run six GPUs at full power. Let's say six RX 5700 XTs or 3070s, 3060s. All right. So, if you're not familiar with the MOX connector, you basically need to slide this thing here into the side and knock down that pin right there. It's sort of like a lock. So you have to get it in there against the side and lock it in there. Even though I actually have all the little tools to get the stuff off, but actually the staple method that I saw in our YouTube video is probably the best method I've seen so far. You just gotta make sure the things are pushed all the way forward. Because if you if they're too far back, then it's gonna hit the it's gonna engage the locking tab and you'll never get the tabs in. Once you have it out of the Molex connector, then you need to uh, see these little tabs. I don't know if you can see this, but you need to get like a little razor blade and push them back out to the lock again. A little tab right there, right there. Yeah, that way actually it will lock into the actual connector again. Because if you put it back in right now, it's just going to pop out again. Alright, there you go. Got the 12 volt. So I made sure I plugged that in first to make sure I got the polarity correct. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I brought the solder all the way up to the first, first uh, jack there. thing here but all right so now I'm gonna wait for this to finish printing and put the back cover on and test it. Yeah, this thing can get messy pretty fast that little workbench area. All right so these were done printing last night and this is the back cover here for here. All right so before that I'm gonna hook up my multimeter and make sure there's no shorts. So I'll, I'll show you that real fast. Right, so I'm trying to do this with one hand so if this thing actually beeps then I know there's a short between the positive and negative. So it could be anywhere on the rail. Um, if there's continuity of these things at all, then you'll hear a beep like that. So the fact that I'm not hearing that means there's no short between the two different buses anywhere in the wiring. So I can't remember if these are called pan head, but it's the actual one with the beveled edge. <coughs> but I designed these so it actually sit flush. So when the cover's on there, it's gonna see, I'm going to be able to actually mount it flush on the 2020 rail. And there it is. And then I'm actually going to hook up uh, some M4 there with the M4 T-nuts to hook onto the extrusion 2020 rail. Alright, so actually these are uh, M3 T-nuts, but I also have like M4. Different thing as T-nuts. Um, I mainly got this for like 3D printing when I built the 3D printers. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna shut the fire or power down my uh, mining rig. All right, so I powered down my mining rig, and this is actually uh, I don't know if I, this is a bunch of 1660 supers and a 3070. Um, so you see the mess of wires back here. How they're in the SATA connectors and kind of connected together. But I, so I'm overloading certain wires, which are not melted now, but so I had actually upgraded these from the Corsair with thicker gauge wire. Um, but the 1660 supers didn't actually pull as much power as like the 5700 XTs, those things pull a lot of power from the, from the riser. Um, so I clean it up and just have one bus bar along the back here. So i got to move my 3D printed SATA adapter thing right there. And hopefully clean it up a lot. So you know, better power distribution and not overloading certain plugs. Okay, so on the back of this power supply, I have one more open uh, A pin. And that's actually where this is going to go. I can't really see this angle but it's going to go right in there. That's my wire clean it back here. So as you can see these are just going to go up to the PCI risers. Now in theory, I mean I could actually power the whole GPU with this but my feed would have to be thicker. My feeding wire and I actually have to you know distribute it over more wires. That's why I'd probably go like a heavier 6 or 8 gauge wire. Open up the power supply and put it directly on the board. So if I was going to be powering all the GPUs and risers on this one bus, it could definitely handle it. Um, like I said, but the feed wires would have to be thicker to be able to handle more amps. But actually, this whole rig right now is pulling less than 500 amps, or 500 watts. So, um, alright. Alright, so before I, I hook these up to my uh, GPUs and burn them out, possibly, I want to verify the polarity of this and... Uh, it doesn't power, then I hit my power switch here. There it goes. Alright, cool. Polarity is correct. 
none of my GPUs are fired up because I don't have the PCI riser. So um, I'm going to hook up one, my cheapest card first, and then do that. I mean, this is all precaution. I know it's going to work. Um, but yeah, it's got to make sure your polarity is correct or you're going to burn out your cards. All right, so here we go. Got them all connected. Uh, I have the extra one, so I, when I find a 6 GPU, all that there. Takes a couple seconds for it to power on. Like I have the motherboard set to AC restore, auto power on. Cool. All right, all fans are spinning. That's good. So I'm gonna shut it down again real fast, and then move the rack back. All right, all my cards showed up. Four 1660 supers and a 3070. All right, that's cool. That's it. So, yeah, so part of the fun about crypto mining for me has been designing all the accessories. You know, the keyboard shelf monitor tray, all this stuff. Yeah, this is actually a 100% 3D printed mining rig. Uh, yeah, all this stuff is on my Thingiverse page, so if you guys uh, want to try this bus bar thing, um, yeah, I, I wanted to stop burning SATA connectors. It just wasn't good, you know, especially... Uh, well, I didn't have so much of an issue with the 1660 Supers, but those things are draw a lot of power from the PCI bus. So, um, alright guys, cool. Yeah, on my Thingiverse page down below. Awesome.